Morning. 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 That's what you get, you see. The bed and sandwiches. Oh, really? Whole style. No. Really? No. No, no. No. <laughs> Too many of them. But I used to, they were okay, the press down there, though. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sweet scared bacon buddies, yeah. Gone another day. <laughs> Can we start then, Steve, with. Injuries, an update on the, the situation with the likes of Andy Carroll, said Maxine. Well, it's it, it's still a bit early for um, for the two of them, but the, they've made big progress this week. Um, we are hoping. I mean, Andy's away to see a, a, a specialist this, this afternoon. He's touch wood. He's delighted of how it's gone so far. So it's, it's good news for us. St Maxine, we're just bordering on the air of caution after what happened the last time with them. And uh, so another another ten days training before we before we play Brighton next week. Hopefully, hopefully we'll be in contention for them. Unfortunately, um, Sean Longstaff turned an ankle yesterday in training. He won't make tomorrow. Um, Try to block a cross and uh, unfortunately twisted his ankle. So uh, we'll not know how severe that is until the next couple of days. But that's a bit of a blow to us. So uh, some good news and obviously a little bit of bad news too. You've already won at Tottenham this season. How much confidence can you take from that going into this game at Anfield? Well, it gives everybody a lift at the right time. You know, it was a, you know we were disappointed with the way we played against Norwich the week before, and uh, so we needed some sort of response. But it, the Spurs, we played very, very well against Leicester in the cup tie in the week, and unfortunately lost on penalties, and we did okay against Watford. However. You know, we're going to the European champions who haven't lost at home for two and a half years. They are as good a team as you're ever going to play against. So we'll have to defend well, that's for sure. But we need to take part in the game and show that resilience, what we showed against Spurs. And, and when we've got it, obviously, can we cause a threat? And um, that's got to give you the game plan straight away again. You have got a good record, though, as a manager. Have I? Well, don't tell me that. <laughs> is, there, is there a key to, to getting success? I think, you know, you know, you know for me, whether, when you go there, it's, it's what we're in it for. It's a great stadium with a, a support, uh, a great support, and you know a big club and big history and big tradition. And whether you're the coach or you're the manager or a player, even player, to go there and play against them is always, for me, always going to be one of the highlights because they are quite unique in, in what they've done over the years and in the history. So I've always just enjoyed it, like the big games. I think it's important that you enjoy it. It's what we're in it for, and. Uh, it couldn't be any more difficult because they're a very, very good team now as well. Miguel Almiron scored for his yep. country in midweek. How important could that be? For well, I hope so. I hope it can be. You know, he's he's done very well here. Unfortunately, he hasn't been able to score a goal. So, but I think the longer like him and Mutu and a lot of people, you know, they've only been in and around the Premier League for six months, twelve months. So that that experience hopefully will help him. I've always said that he needs to get. <clears throat> Excuse me. He needs to get a, um, a goal, and uh, hopefully he'll settle down a bit. You know. Javi Gracia has lost his job since we last spoke to you. Obviously, you were up against him la last time out. It's ridiculous. Your thoughts on that? Well, I think all of us. Look, he took them to the highest finish. Took them to an FA Cup final, and gets the sack after four games. If you ever want to know how crazy our industry is, then then you only have to look at last week. But, you know, the thing is now we're not surprised anymore. It used to be, well, that's a bit of a shock. Or it ain't anybody anymore. I think that's the that's the game, that's the way it is. It's all driven by results. And unfortunately, have you got off to a, a poor start? And when you do that, you're always, unfortunately, up against it. And final one on VAR. Mike Riley has come out and, and highlighted the four mistakes that have been made yep. so far this season. One in a... Uh, a game obviously involving... Well, it wasn't a penalty at Tottenham. Is that what he said? 
No, he didn't mention that one, did he? <coughs> yeah, it shouldn't have been. It shouldn't have been allowed. I mean, look, there's going to be a little mistakes, and I think we're all trying to get used to it. For me, they're going to get more right than they are wrong, and I think that's vitally important. There's still some grey areas where we all have to get used to it. The handball seems to be the most contentious, and of course now, if it brushes your arm, whether it's intentional or not, the law is that you shouldn't. Uh, you shouldn't be able to score a goal through it. So uh, we got away with one. We were due a bit of luck, but the one before against uh, last week, the week before when uh, when Kane went over, that was deemed to be okay. But we'll ha I'm sure we'll have be discussing it a few more times. But I think in the main, most most of us agree that the big decisions, the big decisions, um, they usually get right. Steve, just on injuries, Matt Ritchie and, and Dwight Gale, how are they looking? Um, well, Matt Ritchie's. Uh, uh, well, Matt Ritchie's, um, he, he's been quite re remarkable in his recovery. He's shocked us all, really. I mean, we weren't expecting to see him for at least a couple of months, you know, but the way he trained yesterday and the day before, as long as he doesn't have any reaction, then uh, then I don't think he's very, very far away. So that's good news to us. Dwight Gale, we've just completely come off, come off him um, and, and give him complete rest. And hope that 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 is the key to it. It's a frustrating one for everybody, for Dwight. <clears throat> but he gets to a certain level, and unfortunately, he keeps feeling it. So we hope we hope in the next couple of weeks after complete rest that he's, he's going to be okay. Any chance that Richie could be involved tomorrow? Is it still no, a couple of weeks? No, 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 still a couple of weeks. Okay. In terms of Newcastle's record at Anfield, it it is in the Premier League there's no other way to put it I haven't won there since 94 does that play on your mind at 94. all those sort of records? <clears throat> well a record is always there to be broken however I don't think they've lost at home for two and a half years they are the European champions they are as good as you get let's not let's not beat about the bush there's there's so we're going to hope that we catch them on a bit of an off day they don't seem to have many of them up front they're as they're as good as a, a, I've seen in the pace and the and the way they get the way they get at you, so we're going to have to defend well. But as I've said in the previous interview, there it's one way you've got to try and enjoy. You know, Liverpool has always been a big fixture, whether you're a player, manager, or coach. You want to go there, take them on, and uh, and have a crack at it. Yeah, what are your memories as a Geordie of those those classic encounters? There yeah. have been so many, haven't there, between Liverpool and Newcastle? Well, I remember that the, the was there two four threes, wasn't there? There was two four threes and. Collymore getting the goal, unfortunately, in the last minute, and um, yeah, they were great games, which <clears throat> which helped us at the time when we were in Manchester. You know, there were that result, but uh, yeah, they were great games. They've always seemed to have. It always seems to be. I can remember Malcolm McDonald's debut when I was a kid. He scored three and a hat trick, and they beat them three two at St James's. So that'll test you a few. I don't think there's any even archives of that, is there? <clears throat> if there is, it might have been in black and white. But there you go. And why do you think there have been... I don't, I really don't know. Is it just a fixture? Um, you know, in a personal thing, I hope there's not a lot of goals tomorrow. You know, if, if, but if it goes our way, then then fine. But I don't know, really. It's quite, it's quite, it's unbelievable. That seems to throw up a few goals. And we mentioned the, the Tottenham win earlier this season. Obviously, huge result for Newcastle. Gives you confidence for this. It's not just this season, though. Think back to last season, Newcastle beating Manchester City. This squad does have a surprise in it. Well, the, the the one thing I've learned very very quickly uh, is that they've been together for a, a, you know a couple of years, the core of them, and they're, they're a really really honest and genuine group of players. And when you've got that, then you're capable of doing anything. We know that we have to go in and uh, and ride our luck a little bit tomorrow, but they're capable of producing a result. They, they did it a couple of weeks ago. Hey, listen, we all know how difficult it's going to be, but let's go and have a crack, enjoy the occasion. And, um, and see if we can pull off a shock. We mentioned Newcastle's record at Anfield and, and your managerial record against Liverpool, which is much better comparatively. Maybe they'll balance each other out? Well, I sincerely hope so. As I've said, in the, I, I've, I've always enjoyed I've always enjoyed the challenge of taking on Liverpool, whether it was a player or it was a manager, a coach or whatever. Liverpool is Liverpool, one of the great iconic clubs of this of this country. And uh, even though I get a bit of stick, I'll, um, I've, always in, I've always enjoyed and join taking them on. Yeah, there's a little bit of banter there, isn't there, sometimes between... Oh, I'm not just sharing it, banter. Don't you start stoking them up. They'll, they'll not need that for, for sure. Hopefully they'll not be in the pub at 12.30, so they'll forget about me.
Steve. Thank you. Steve, with um, the international break, it obviously gives you a little bit of time away from the day-to-day. -day. Have you been kind of looking at the longer-term plan, looking towards January and looking <coughs> at what you want to build here? Well, I think it was vitally important that, look, always that you're looking to, to, to get better. I have to be honest, in the last week or so, it was just, well, taking stock of everything what's happened in the previous seven. And I think it's vitally important now that we work with a 25-man squad that we've got. Obviously, there's two, three injuries which are a concern to all of us. We have to try and look at them. So that was my me main, me main concern, of course. In the next couple of weeks then, you know, we will look at January and I'll sit down with Steve and his, and his crew to to see where we can strengthen. And I think that's the with every club to go and go forward is, can you strengthen? I think we're in a position now where rather than have five or six, there's probably one or two and look for that real bit of quality that can make you better. You know, we've seen Joe Linton, or we can see Almiron, just in January alone. You know, the, that little bit of quality at the top end of the pitch um, has certainly helped us. Do you think the break came at a good time for the for the players? Maybe just to take stock. Well, certainly with one or two injuries, yes, we've got one or two back closer. Um, whether it's a good time or a bad time, it, it, it's always there, you know. So we had a decent week. We're disappointed that we lost on penalties to Leicester. But we had a good week leading up to the to the break. And, uh, you know, four points from the last couple of games in the Premier League. However, we've got an easy tie at Liverpool tomorrow. It's an easy game tomorrow. So, you know, it's not, it's, it was time to, to, to reflect and, and have a little look at what we've, what we've done. And just finally, we've talked about your record there, Newcastle's record with Liverpool and the great result against Tottenham and last, last season's result against Man City. But do you get the impression that this group of players, there is a genuine belief that they can get, get a result? Well, I think they've proved it. They've gone to Spurs and, and, and got a result and beat Man City last year. So they've got it in them. And as I said, you know, since I've walked through the door, there's a core of them and a nucleus of them here who've been here two, three, four years now. And there's a very, very decent spirit amongst them and and uh, they're capable. They've shown that, that they're not afraid of a bit of hard work and we'll have to do that tomorrow and um, and play very, very well. And if we can defend well, then, you know, it's a game of football. Everybody's got a chance. Thank you. Thank you. Steve, um, you've mentioned Sean Longstreet before, not, not being fit for this game. He'll be disappointed because, of course, Anfield is where he made his sort of Premier League bow for the match guys. Yeah, I mean, it's one of them awful ones where he goes to stop a cross and unfortunately gets his ankle caught, the ball hit him and turned his ankle over. So it's uh, one of them freak ones which unfortunately happen. Um, and sometimes you you know, you come off the pitch and we're all disappointed. We're disappointed for him that we've lost a, lost a player to a freak accident. But look, that's what happens in football, unfortunately. So he'll miss out, but um, I'm sure there's few more occasions he'll, he'll look forward to, to playing there again. And just you, you mentioned obviously that Andy Carroll is, is getting closer and that he's, he's going right. to see a, a specialist. Do, do you sort of sense you know that his sort of mood's been lifted knowing that you know, there is light at the end of the tunnel? I think for everybody to see him joining in with training was good for him, it's good for the group of course and of course we need we need now some positive news from his specialist which he's, he's doing a session as we speak now and he's gone down to London this morning. So we hope all that is good news. He's certainly comfortable with it, and uh, and he's close. So let, let's hope there's a bit of luck coming our way. I was going to say, you mentioned he's close. In your mind, have you sort of got a, an idea of when you think you'll be able to get him? Well, I've always said, you know, it, it's it's always very difficult to put a time scale on something like Andy. He's fit when he's fit. So um, he's joined in. He's worked extremely hard. There's a smile across his face this morning where he's comfortable, which is good. I mean, always when you've had an ankle like he's got, then it's the reaction to the work he's put in. At the moment, it's very, very good. So, touch wood. Um, let's hope we can get some good news. And just last one, I know um, you talked before about VAR and, you know, that the, you sort of got away with one. Do you not look at it though and just think, well, you know, these things work themselves out over a season? Yep. Yeah, well, maybe he's got away with one and uh, everybody was clamouring for a penalty at Tottenham where that wasn't deemed by VAR. Look, I think with all VAR, there's, there's going to be a few mistakes and anything new. But the vast majority of where I can, where I can see, they've got right. And there's still going to be some contentious ones, even with the, the technology that we've got. Um, 
So, you know, there's still going to be one or two things that get wrong, but the vast majority, you know, 95, 98% of the times they're going to get right. Do you think it improves the, the Premier League, having the technology? My only, my only concern is the whole thing is that you can see everybody now looking around to a television screen every time there's a goal being scored. You know, and that unique moment is what we're all in football for, that enjoyment of seeing your team score a goal. Whether you're a player, supporter, coach, manager, wherever you are, um, so that is always going to be a bit difficult, but I suppose in the long run, we've seen so many big tournaments, you know, England against Germany, for example, you know, when the ball was three foot over the line, you know, so big, big calls like that, ultimately we're going to get right, and and uh, I think that's going to be a good thing. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Transfer embargo. <laughs> is that where it is, Lee? Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Cheers.